Hey, this is CND Channel. I'm Chris. This is MMA for you. I'm going to be doing my close fight analysis for UFC Fight Night 48. Overall, uh, there are some really terrible fights in here. <laughs> there are some decent fights here as well. There's actually a good amount of finishes. Um, but yeah, some of the other fights are just pretty bad. So it's kind of like that mixed bag. Um, they're really well with my picks. And I'm particularly proud of these picks. Uh, I got 9 out of 10. The only one that I missed was Wayne Cy versus Danny Mitchell. Uh, I'm particularly proud, though, because I, you know, if you, if you uh, saw my predictions, read, even read the comments, it's like I really did my research for uh, this card. Like, I really suffered through, like, uh, tough China fights and whatnot. Uh, <laughs> So, I, I should actually be like 8 out of 10 because I don't think Royce and Wee beat uh, Yao Zikui. I, I don't know how to pronounce his name, so I'll just pronounce it like that. But always, yeah, man, I, 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 I tried to find Pancras fights. Um, you know, I went to Tough China just to f find footage of each fighter here. And, uh, yeah, the picks reflected, uh, my, you know, the actual time and research. So I'm pretty proud of that one. Yeah. And, um, as far as bonuses go, um, everyone got a performance of the night. There was no fighter tonight, but it was, uh, Bisbing, Woodley, um, Mina, and Sasaki. They got, uh, performance of the night bonuses. There was no five in the night. Uh, a couple of things to note. One judge, Howard Hughes, was pulled from ju his judging position after the first two fights. Um, and those two were very questionable uh, decisions. Um, and those two fights really had some of the most questionable judging out there. Uh, the rest of the card was actually fine. Um, which is, so, so, there's some irony there, I guess. Um... But none of the fights that I look at, they're either finishes or they weren't that close. So, um, at least you can kind of give some sort of justification for 29-28 We, um, I actually thought Milana Dudova won <laughs> her fight, not 30-27 though. Um, but otherwise, yeah, the first two fights, very questionable judging. Uh, some notes. Some of these, like some of these Asian fighters, are just really bad. I mean, Royce and Wee, yeah, it's a coup. He's bad. He's not very good. Covington versus Wang was a mismatch. Um, as far as Mino versus Enza, is it Anzai? Anzai um, was, you know. It, the guys like build a striker, and he just throws like short hooks, you know. Wang Sai actually didn't look too bad. Zhang the Pang actually didn't look too bad. Ning Ganjo, Gang Yo, and Zhipang Yang. That fight was just terrible, though. I mean, just really bad. So there are some pretty low. There are some some low level guys here too. Um, and I think moving, you know, moving forward when they have like uh, fight cards in mainland China. And Macau, and, and just when they're getting a lot of these guys from like All Threat Fighter China and whatnot, and he's like, you know, I guess they're kind of like low level prospects to be honest with you. You know, it, you gotta expect low level fighters in, in these type of cards because they're trying to build that market and build those fighters. So uh, let's get right to it. Michael Bisming defeated Kung Lee by TKO in the first uh, fourth round. Uh, Bisming he, he's pretty much back to form. You know, high volume striking, good cardio. You know, I mean, after the third, he was kind of huffing and puffing, and he said that Lee was hitting him in the body. I had to see the body work from Kung, you know, Kung Lee. That was good. Uh, Bisming was also using a lot more kicks, including like spinning kicks. So that that was. Um, Interesting, you know, it, it's good that Bisping probably used those. Uh, I thought Lee acquitted himself well considering his age, that he's 42. And, you know, at the, you know, there's no illegal eye pokes or anything. I mean, he, he got punched in the eye. And, um, 
considering his age, and, and also who he went up against, you know, Bisping, you know, he gets a lot of hate, but he is a solid fighter, you know. Uh, I thought he acquitted himself well, you know, I, I considering everything. You know, I, I didn't really see a performance that set, spoke like retirement per se. Um, where you're just getting blasted in the first round, like Maynard, you know, it's like he, he gets touched once, you know, with a left hook and he's just like, he like freezes, you know? Or like Lil Nog or Big Nog where they're just getting knocked out by these like, you know, like Rumble getting these uppercuts on Lil Nog or like Roy Nelson killing uh, Big Nog with with his overhand right, you know, it's just, you know, you're not seeing him get knocked out over and over and over again. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know if he, he should consider retirement per se. I mean, considering his, a lot of it's just his age, but as far as, like, wear and tear, I think it actually kind of helps that he doesn't fight a lot, so he can recover, you know, he's not fighting too often, so I guess he can, like, recover in between a lot of times, um, but yeah, so, for me, personally, I know other people are thinking, oh, he should retire, he should retire, I I'm not in that camp, to be honest with you. And he actually did pretty well in the first round, you know. Um, I kind of figured if the fight goes, especially in the later rounds, that Lee wasn't going to win. Um, especially Bisping's style of high volume, high pressure, his cardio, you know. It, it's just, it's not a good recipe uh, for Kung Lee. Uh, after the fight, Bisping called out Luke Rockhold. Um, not the worst fight to put together. But I, I think that might be a little too high for Bisbing, considering, I mean, he lost to Kennedy. He's coming off a win over Lee, as far as rankings go. I'd say give him, like, a Tim Bosch, who's coming off that win over Brad Tavares. C.B. Dalloway, who's coming off a uh, win over Francis Carmon. Maybe even Costas Fulipu, you know? He's coming off a good win over, uh, I think, Larkin. Uh, or the winner of uh, Leites versus Carmon, you know? Um... Just somewhat more towards like the top 11 to 15 type guys, 10 to 15 type guys, you know. Um, as far as Kung Lee goes, if he wants to come back, if you want to give him like, I don't know, a rematch with Vandalay, that might work. If you want to give him like a, a up and coming prospect, the only guy I can really think of that has something, because with Kung Lee, you can't just give him like, like a total nobody. It, just, it doesn't work that way. Um, with Kung Lee. He needs someone with, who has something of a name. I'm thinking uh, Uriah Hall, to be honest with you, would probably be a good next fight for Kung Lee. I just, I can't really, because you can't really give him a, like a top guy, you know? He's just going to lose. And, he, you know, it's best to give Kung Lee a guy that's more of an action fighter that will stand with him. So... That's kind of why I'm saying you're right, Hall. It's just, I can't really think of a of a guy for Lee, Kung Lee to fight um, at middleweight. So, yeah, that's uh, how I see that fight. Or um, how I see those two going. Next fight after that, Tyron Woodley defeated Dong Hyun Kim by TKO in the first round. One minute and one second in the first round. You know, the thing is... And I think most people saw it coming with uh, Dong Hyun Kim. His new aggressive style was eventually going to work against him. Because he turned up the aggression. He turned, he turned up the offense. But to the point where he forsaken any type of defense. I'm just scared. The guy doesn't have good defense in the stand-up. Um... And it's really strange with Woodley, you know, because he's the type of guy that if he wins... I mean, there are a couple of his strike force wins are really bad land prey fights, like against Safadine, Jordan Mean, and, like, Paul Daly. But as of late, you know, um, if he wins, it's usually like an emphatic win, and if he loses, he tends to lose pretty badly. He's either, like, really hot or really cold. <laughs> That's the thing with him. Um, yeah, Kim went for that spinning strike, and then Woodley just tied it and, and hit him 
it, I guess, flush. I can't really tell where. I thought it was almost a back of the head uh, strike. I can't really tell, you know. But um, you know, this was actually a really much needed win for Tyron Woodley. And um, I think he should probably get, even though he's come off a loss, Matt Brown. Is Woodley's like ranked like number four. He's really high up there. So you have to kind of give him someone pretty high up there next. Maybe, or, or Damian Maya. And maybe if, if Safadine beats McDonald, then he can do a rematch with Woodley and Safadine. Woodley's probably not going to fight like Hector Lombard. Robbie Lawler gets a title shot. So, you know, I can't really think of t uh, Woodley. He already beat, uh, Woodley already beat Condit. So I can't really think of too many other people that um, Tyrone Woodley can fight that aren't like training partners or guys he's already fought or guys that are already scheduled for fights. So, um, heck, actually Robbie Lawler's like a training partner of his too. He's also ATT. So, yeah, that's uh, yeah. There's not many guys I can think of that uh, Tyrone Woodley should get next. As far as uh, Dong and Kim goes, maybe a loser of Safadine versus McDonald. Um, the loser of Gunnar Nelson versus Rick Story. Or the loser of Jordan Mean versus uh, Mike Quicksand Pyle. Okay, next right after that, Zhang the Peg defeated Brendan O'Reilly by unanimous decision. I actually liked what I saw, you know, um, from both Le Peng and Wang Tsai were finalists of the Ultimate Fighter China. Who actually looked good and actually had experience, and, and I gotta say they, uh, the very what I can say here, they're not great fighters or anything, but they do look a lot more complete. You know, it's not like they have these like huge liabilities on the ground, or because a lot of these like a lot of these Chinese fighters have like liabilities, especially in the ground. You know. He just looked uh, a lot more complete. I liked what I saw from him. You know, I'm not gonna say he's gonna wreck a lot of people or anything. Zhang Lepeng, but and the guy he fought was like five and zero, first fight in the UFC. You know, um, but you know he uh, Lepeng, he showed uh, good back takes. He's got keeping the back with a body triangle. You know. Um, I was actually hitting some ground and pound from the back position, which I really like. I think it's pretty uh, underutilized. O'Reilly looked like, kind of gassed. Um, he's bleeding pretty heavily too. Um, you know, it was actually a pretty solid performance for Zhang with Peng. Um, I don't know who you can give him next. I, I think you have to actually give him someone kind of solid next. You know. Um, I just don't know who that is. Just like lower to mid tier guys of Walter Waite. With O'Reilly, you know, just some lower tier guy. Or, you know, O'Reilly can just be that guy if you need to give a guy some prospect who just lost like a win, get his confidence back. Uh, you know, sorry about O'Reilly. It's just, you know, I mean, he's like 5 and 1. And he's. Just like a lower tier guy, you know, I can't really say much about him. Uh, next fight after that, Ning Ganyo defeated Zhang Ping Yang by unanimous decision to win the Ultimate Fighter China Featherweight Tournament. Terrible fight. This <laughs> is just utterly terrible, man. <laughs> this is this is just like kind of what I ex in a sense expected from the two. It's just so low level. This is striking was low level, you know. Ning, the only thing he knew how to throw was like an overhand left, and Yang backed up the whole time. There's all this movement. I mean, they were moving a lot, but there's like no offense. They wouldn't like throw a punch. Sometimes they just move. Like they just move. It, it was pretty terrible. <laughs> um, these guys should only be fighting other guys from the Ultimate Fighter China or just some really low level guys because like they're just not very good. They're also in featherweight, man. Uh, if they can get the bantamweight, they would at least, you know, because featherweights, are, in my opinion, like the most stacked divisions are like 
from a welterweight lightweight, those are interchangeable depending on who you talk to. Okay. Some people will say like lightweight's more stacked, some people say welterweight's more stacked. But the next like most stacked division after that, it's gotta be featherweight. You know? I can't think of a featherweight on the UFC roster that isn't from like the Ultimate Fighter China that these guys could seriously be. I, I you know, um some of the lower level guys in the division are like decent, you know, like um geez, who's a guy that uh geez, ah, totally forget like Steven Siler, okay, that guy is coming off like two, three losses in a row, you know? He'd kill those guys. You know, um I forgot the, uh, there's this one British fighter that's always, like, super game, but never, but doesn't win. He's a very non-winning fighter. Or, like, a Sam Cecilia, a Matt Hobart, Aaron Phillips. I think all of these guys, those are, like, the most, like, lowest tier guys. Mark Adiva, you know, um, Mark is actually pretty solid. They, I think they work these guys. I mean, there's so so many like low level guys that I think would just totally work both of these guys. I mean, they're just not very good. You know, at least with Zhang Lepeng and, and Wang Sai, they they have some experience behind them and they look solid enough. Like they don't have huge holes in their grappling or huge holes in their striking. Wrestling, their takedown defense looked a lot better in this fight, and their overall wrestling looks better. These guys are just like the striking's not that good, the wrestling's not that good, and their ground game is just sloppy. I mean, they're just bad everywhere. You know, hate to say it, except for Wang would throw like a, a, a Yang, excuse me, Yang would um throw like an inside leg kick that was pretty decent. Otherwise, these guys aren't very good. <laughs> Just fight more guys from Dodgeman Fighter China because the lowest level featherweight in the UFC that isn't from like Ultimate Fighter China or just some other scrub could most likely beat these guys. Okay, on to the uh, prelims. Uh, Wang Sai defeated Danny Mitchell by unanimous decision. Um. You know, uh, like I said, uh, Wang Sai looked a lot more complete. You know, I thought that Mitchell would have a huge edge on the ground. You know, um, he works decently off his back and whatnot. Will even go for flying attacks and whatnot. But you know, uh, Wang Sai's takedown defense looked pretty good. He was on top, um, unleashing ground and pound. Looks like he's training at a decent camp too, aka Thailand with like Mike Swick. So, um, yeah, this, you know, it, it's guys like this that, like, Han Wang Sai and Sang Lepang that actually give me hope for a lot of these, like, uh, Chinese fighters. Um, you know, no offense to them personally, it's just that, like, you know, with MMA, they're pretty new. <laughs> um, and what I see from a lot of them is not... It's pretty much what I see from like got from uh, fighters out, out out of like the SFL, where they're just so new and so sloppy at, in certain aspects of the game, you know, um, that it's hard to have like real faith in them becoming like good fighters. <laughs> to be honest with you, and you you gotta wonder about their coaching. You know, the the best coaching isn't like. North America or like Brazil, you know, some there, uh, some of uh, Europe is getting a lot better though. Like All Stars is getting really good. There's a couple good camps in Europe. Uh, SVG Ireland's getting a lot better. So Western Europe is getting a, a lot of good camps. But like, um, yeah, I, I can't really think of great. I mean, there's China top team, I, I suppose. They're like the best camp in China, I guess. I, I don't know. Um, but it's hard, it's hard to have faith in a lot of these guys to be, to, to win fights in the UFC. But um, 
you know, like I said, got you know, some of these guys look like they're actually improving and looked solid. I liked what I saw from Sai. He was also uh, counter striking Mitchell's kicks really well. His takedown defense is pretty decent. He's landed good ground and pound. It's more lower to mid tier guys of the division for Wang Sai. And for Danny Mitchell, he should probably just get cut. Next round of that, Alberto Mina defeated Shinsho and Zai by TKO in the first round. That was a fun fight. They both gassed really early. And Zai. And say, so, you know, he throws... It's funny, they were billing him a striker. I've seen him... Like, the only strikes he has are, like, short hooks. You know, like... Uh, I know he's out of Team Climb, and he has a lot of wrestling credentials, actually. And has some, uh... 80, you know, Abu Dhabi Combat Club Asia Trials, um... Experience, you know. Alberto Mina, though, uh, you know... Decent strike. He was landing some uppercuts and counter strikes, kind of well. And the the one that dropped inside, you know, it was just like an uppercut. And I don't know what the ref was thinking with like those. There's like five or six ground and pound strikes that were totally unnecessary. I mean, after the uppercut, it should have pretty much been over. Um, but you know, uh, Shinsho, he he took the fight on short notice. Did as best as he could, you know. I mean, I think it was like nine days, eight days notice or something like that. So did the best he could, but you know, it, it just if he don't get the finish in the first round, he he would have been done. Um, well, both of these guys like pretty cast out actually after that first round. Uh, it's really hard for me to say much about these guys. I know Mina's got some hype behind him. He's got a judo black belt, Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. Striking isn't too bad. So I just give him some more mid to lower tier guys of the division. And for Shinsho, it's more lower to mid tier guys of the division for him too. Next fight off that, Yuta Sasaki defeated Roland DeLorme by rear naked choke in the first round. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm glad I picked Sasaki here, you know, he, he's a top prospect, you know, Japan's getting some of these really good prospects like uh, Michinori Tanaka or Kyoji Horiguchi, and you gotta put Yuta Sasaki up in that list as well, I think those are like the big three, they fight, uh, they all fight in like bantamweight or featherweight, um, uh, Sasaki was actually showing some pretty good striking, I mean, he threw his like flying knee, you know, a la like Carl Uno VJ Pen <laughs> that like totally missed, you know. Uh, but his striking actually didn't look too bad from what little that there was really. But man, that the takedown, the back take, that rear naked choke, I mean that was some really good stuff. Uh, I know Yuta Sasaki has some ADCC uh, Asia um, experience as well. So he's got some, you know, a lot of his, I believe a, a good amount of his submission wins are by Rainer Naked Choke. So, um, yeah, good stuff from him. Unfortunately for the Lord, this will be three losses in a row. Um, he's a good fighter, but you keep giving him, like, the top, the most, like, top prospects out there, you know? I mean, you may got, like, Francisco Rivera, who, who knocked him out, but then, um, you know, got busted for weed, and so it was a no contest. You know, you can kind of call him a prospect, or you know, um, then he got like Alex Caceres, um, then he got like Tanaka, I and mean, he gets some really tough guys <laughs> for some weird reason. I mean, he got like Edwin Figueroa, he managed to be, but yeah, he, that's the thing with the Lorm, you know. He's probably going to get cut, and actually in a post-fight interview, he actually said, I felt like I lost my job. So, so actually, I actually think he's a decent bantamweight, to be honest with you. But uh, a lot, he's getting, like, some really good, he's getting these really, like, top-of-the-line prospects a lot of times. Um, with Sasaki, you know, just more lower to mid-tier bantamweights. Next one, I thought Kobe Covington defeated and Yang Wang by well, a submission due to strikes in the first round. This was a total mismatch. And even on paper, I was like, oh man, and Yang Wang. I mean, 
Dude, you're up against this, like, American wrestler from ATT. And, and he has, like, these, like, big... And he has these, a really... A pretty good wrestling pedigree, too. You know, it's like, dude, I doubt Wang's gonna, you know, kick in is even training with that good of a wrestler and even if he is you're not gonna pick you're, not, you're just not gonna pick up wrestling that fast you know I mean this is like a big time wrestler and a pretty good prospect too to be honest with you total mismatch it kinda went you know I was like I knew Covington could pretty much get to takedown whenever he wanted ride him for as long as he wanted to more or less you know, what can I say? He just coming in, would throw a body kick, go for a takedown, get him down with relative ease, ground and pound him, ride him if he wanted to. Total mismatch. I mean, Andy and Wang sh should not be fighting, like, guys of the caliber of Colby Covington. It just... Well, you know what it reminds me of when I see some of these guys? It... When they're against each other, like a lot of these like Ultimate Fighter China guys, or in the case of Royce and Wee, who is like um, a, a Singapore fighter, you know, it, it reminds me of like Super Fight League, where they'd get like these Indi guys from uh, India, some guys from Egypt, um, geez, I've got one other country, it was like Sri Lanka or something like that, and they'd fight each other and they do relative they can beat each other but once they get like some Brazilian fighter or some like a uh, European fighter or an American fighter they get killed and it just it just kind of reminds me you know seeing guys like An Yang Wang or like Ning Gang Yo or Jim Peng Yang or Royston Wee you know they're they're on like that's really low level and it's like the minute they fight someone who's just like decent they get destroyed you know that that's the thing that's why it, it's it's a really strange thing because I don't really know what the UFC's trying to do um with signing some of these guys so quickly you know it's like recently it was like three or two and oh three and oh yeah was the coup was like one and one. <laughs> I mean, you know, some of these records are just terrible. And Yang Wang's like two and zero. Oh, you know, I mean, you don't develop by finding the Kobe Covingtons in the world. You, you develop by finding in the regionals against increasingly, you know, against guys around your level, and then increasingly better opposition. You don't just fight like this, like. ATT wrestling prospect after your like second fight, you know, it just it doesn't make sense for Covington, you know. I mean, he's probably fought better guys than An Yin Wang um, already, so you know, good one for Covington. It's kind of expected though. Next one I thought Royce and Wee defeated Yao Zaku by split decision. Um. Yeah, super questionable decision there. I thought that yeah, I should have won. He he got that much better striking. Whereas in Reed's striking looks terrible. The guy backs up straight in a straight line. He has no defense. His so wrestling isn't bad, but he has like no timing for it unless he like has to use it or something, you know? He doesn't use it very it's almost he uses it almost defensively. It's like, oh I'm getting hit. I better start wrestling now, you know, or something like that, to uh, get out of this. Um, but otherwise, yeah, was just causing so much more damage than we was. I mean, it's just, you know, the first round he got him really good. I I think the second round we managed to reverse top and get top position, but otherwise, I, I thought Zaku got like at least twenty nine, twenty eight here. You know, there's not much for me to say about these guys. There's a lot. They're not very good. Um, just more. I, I don't know if you cut if they're gonna cut Yao Zaku. I I wonder if they want to keep Royston Wee because he's the first Singapore national. They ever want to get 
in that market, you know, they have a guy, a national there, but he's not that good, so you have to keep feeding them, like, really bad fighters. <laughs> um, and that's my guess for what they're going to do with Royston Wee. If, if they give him a decent guy, I think they fight at Bantamweight, right? So who's, who's like, the worst guy in Bantamweight? Um... That's still in the UFC. I, I, let me let me think of who's in there. Heck, they can give Roland Delorme, and I think Roland Delorme would crush Royston Wee. You know, <laughs> there we go. Like like give him like a Roland Delorme. Um, who else? You know, even if you give him like an Ian Entwistle or or like a Daniel Hooker or or, or something like that. They would wreck these guys. I mean, they're just, they're that bad, you know? They really are. They're just that bad, you know? So, I I don't know what happens to Ziao because his record kind of sucks. I think he might get cut, even though it's just, he could just be one and done with Royce and Wee. I'm probably just giving some really, really low-level guy. And finally, Milana Dudeva defeated Elizabeth Phillips by split decision. It's somewhat questionable, but I'll, uh, I'll honestly say I thought Milana won the fight. I th it was a case of like Milana's winning a stand up. She get her against a cage, take her down, and she get reversed. But Phillips, a lot of times, and, and the problem is Milana would win like. So in the first round, I get to Milana, right? Second and third, it was kind of like the same idea of Milana. But pretty much win the first two and a half, maybe like three minutes of the second and third round. And then she gets reversed, and Phillips would throw a little bit of ground and pound, you know. Maybe in the second, a little more than... In the third, she threw like nothing, you know. And it, that was kind of the fight, and I was just like, well, yeah, I mean, Phillips ended up on top. Um... At the end of the round, but it was like it was really a case of like the one that was doing a lot more offense just throughout the whole fight was Milana Dudova, you know. Um, and then Elizabeth Phillips goes on like Twitter and rants, and has this huge rant saying she like hates the UFC, which she's like oh and two in the UFC, she's probably gonna get cut, <laughs> and that rant's probably not gonna help her. Um, you know, I don't think this was a robbery, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, I think it really was a case of just someone doing a lot more in the first half of a round than the person was doing in the second half of the round. So, I don't agree with 30-27 per se, but 29-28, um, Alana Dudova. Yeah, I agree with that. I gotta say that, you know, both of these female fighters, they seem pretty low level, to be honest with you. Uh, Milana has no... She has good judo. Her striking isn't the best technically, but it's actually pretty effective. She, has, she just has that, like... You know, like, a lot of these Samba guys. I, I don't even know if dude was, like, a Samba guy. I thought... Guy. I thought she was like pure judo. But like they have this like really untechnical um untechnical technical striking that is nonetheless effective. Um she has good judo throws, but her but her positioning's really bad. I mean I I'm surprised she should just get a takedown and if she's on top, she should not even think of passing guard. You know, she should just be thinking ground and pound or something because, like, it, she loses position on the transition. That That's what happened in both of the times she got reversed. It's just on the transition, she gets reversed. And, and it's mainly her own fault because she's out of position a lot of times in the transition period. So she definitely needs to work on that. Um... You can give uh, Milana like a Jermaine de Rondami or like a Valerie Latornu next. 
I suppose. So, um, that's it for my UFC Fight Night 48 post fight analysis. If you have any comments, just leave them below. That's it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.